We are, we think we're live. I'm going to welcome everybody on the assumption. Good morning. Good morning from a very snowy, very, very snowy Worcestershire. Well, it's probably worse than other parts of the country, I'm sure. But it was lovely to wake up this morning and to see all the snow coming down. So we're on a different day today because it was Pete and my 10th wedding anniversary yes, uh, yesterday. So we, we celebrated that. We gave that a high priority, obviously. And we had an absolutely lovely day. Um, we uh, had, it was a bit of a contrast to 10 years earlier when we started the day, although it was a little bit stormy, we walked on the beach, on Seven Mile Beach, and checked out our wedding venue um, at Cayman Beach Suites. Um, and we had a very relaxed day and we got married at about half an hour before sunset on Seven Mile Beach on Grand Cayman, which is a beautiful location that I knew really well because I, I lived there for a few years. And it was somewhere that I'd seen other people get married and I just thought it was so romantic. Um, so it was just me and Pete, and my best friend Penny, who still lives there, who was brilliant at organizing it, um, and her best friend, Greg. And we got married by the, the Reverend Magoo, Godfrey Magoo, who was brilliant. And he's still um, doing weddings and stuff. And my friend Penny saw him last week in church and he wished us uh, both, by the way, I didn't tell you that, Pete, um, both wished us both a very happy 10th wedding anniversary. Penny sweet sings in the choir um, at the same church. So, so yeah, so that was, um, that was just lovely. And yet yesterday we um, took advantage of the beautiful sunshine and walked up um, the local hill for us is Breeden Hill, which we can see from our house. And um, I'm sure like a lot of you, you know, we, we love walking, um, but Breeden Hill has just got everything in a, in a relatively short walk. So we just went out for a couple of hours and had a lovely time. And then in the evening, we'd, we'd got some beautiful steak, hadn't we, Pete? Is it a porter? Porter house. It's a, oh, it's a porter house, yeah, of course it is. Porter house, so, so basically got the bone, and it was so thick, this porter house, absolutely beautiful. This one, not for the vegans. Um, but uh, oh, we did have some lovely spinach as well. Coffee time. There we go, coffee! Thank you, Pete. So that was, um, that was, that was lovely. All the prep was done for us. We got it from um, a restaurant called Hawksmoor in London which was, um, was really nicely prepped and we had lovely uh, chips. And the best, I think it's one of the best treacle toffee puddings I've ever had. Absolutely fabulous. So they got that whole thing. So it's absolutely lovely. And log burner in our front room and just chilling. And yeah, what a lovely way to spend a day, even though we couldn't be on the beach. It was a good second best. So Welcome to everybody. Um, if there were, if it were possible to get some comments, it would be lovely because I now am just looking at the back of my phone, which quite frankly is not giving me a lot of feedback. So I'm hoping that Pete is going to give me um, some of the feedback and sort of shout it out a little bit because um, that would be really useful for me if he can get on. Um, and today, for those of you who are both domestic as well as our long arm customers, we thought that it would be good to do some techniques that you could benefit from perhaps um, a bit more information on. Um, I hope you learn something. I know that we've got some really experienced customers. I mean, our long arm customers are, some of them who've had their long arms for like 10 years or something, are so experienced, world-class quilters. So I, f I feel sometimes a little bit inadequate in, in terms of um, my long arming skills compared to them. But I hope I can bring something to the table in terms of marking, because for um, many years, as, as uh, most of you will know, I worked at the Cotton Patch and my, my, one of my chief roles was, was purchasing the accessories. So I tried everything. And I would often, well, I would always, if it was pens and marking tools, I would always test them out. Um, so the first one I wanted to mention today, any, any comments from anybody, Pete? Anybody you will say hi to? There's lots of people wishing us a happy anniversary. Oh, how lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, the, the first one I meant to mention was, is from um, someone called Roxanne, Roxanne McElroy, who um, has, her daughter, Deirdre, has been running um, the company um, since uh, her mother, Roxanne, set it up. And I believe, I think she sold it now to, um, to a different company in the States. But anyway, it's called Roxanne uh, Quilter's Choice Pencils. And they come in silver and white. I know Cotton Patch stock these. 
Um, mine is a little short because I lent it to Kimi Bruno and it started off like this. And by the time I got it back, it was like this big. Because Kimmy had mocked up all of the quilts for our academy a few years ago and she she was using it like crazy. But it's a really nice silver pencil. So silver is um it's a really it's a good option where obviously a white marking pen doesn't work so well um, on a light fabric. So something like this, I can actually it's a bit like having a, a lead pencil but without the downsides of lead. And uh, so we can use it to to mark on and you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to show you after I've done all of these. I'll do one after another. And it's it's enough that you can see it. Uh, it shows up just as a silver line, but the white obviously would work on the dark fabrics. Now, the benefit of this is it does come out in, in water. Um, and But alternatively, if you sew over it, honestly, you could hardly see it by the time you've sewn. It's also very good for hand quilting because you can really see it. And it's it's one that... Uh, I've used for many years with success. If you do want to get rid of marks, by the way, the something like the um, uh, textile erasers, uh, fabric erasers, uh, doesn't erase textiles, but it erases the marks on textiles, and uh, that will work really well on the Roxanne pencil. So I'm just, I don't know how we're going to do this close up other than me coming around the other side. Ah. Can you see, Pete? Is it looking like if we can see everything? Oh, you are bringing it. I'll bring it closer. Yeah, I think that, because you don't need to see me. Definitely not. I'm going to bring that here. Right, so, can you see that? Yeah, it's looking okay, okay I think. Yeah, perfect. So, just realising. Reflections. I think. Yeah, it's fairly faint. It's, okay. But... Well, that's because I've done it <clears throat> deliberately faint. So I guess you won't see very well. What, what, um, one thing I wanted to mention was that whilst we can draw you know, designs on this, it's a lot easier on a hard surface. So I've got a quilting uh, wadding laid up over to my right because I want to show that actually it makes a difference if you've got wadding underneath. Some things you can do when they're off the frame and not layered, and you might want to mark some of your quilting designs in advance. Other ones you can do on the frame and it doesn't matter if there is no support underneath because they mark so easily. So bear that in mind. But also this pencil is particularly useful for making tick lines. So you might want to line up things like your ruler. So, you see? Yes, people are saying they can see it, so that's good. That's good. So that, these faint marks <clears throat> now, which I've just had a go at. Morning to Jeannie in Scotland. Oh, hello. Yes, hello, Jeannie. See, we've got somebody from North Carolina as well. Um, oh, good. Morning. I love North Carolina. I was there last uh, year before last. Uh, Sue so says, Charlotte. what's the name of this one? Marking yep. pencil. You will note there's not very much left of this. It's Roxanne Quilter's Choice in silver. It has that silver... It just says choice left. Yeah, but yes, but it's Roxanne, Roxanne Quilter's, Quilter's Choice. choice. Okay, so that's that's the first one that I wanted to Morning, Graham. mention. Sherilyn, we haven't heard from anybody else that there's an issue, so... No, the, the <clears> thing <throat> about the Roxanne... The one about the Roxanne, I've used it for 25 years. Um, I think it's as long as that. So there is really no problem on the fabrics I've ever used it on. Well, and it's shall. been in production that long. Right, the next one I want to show you is one that we, we just got in. I haven't actually even put it up on the website yet, but it's one you can get from various places. And we've got some of these in there. They're four pounds. And this is a pink one. Now, if you leave it long enough, it will disappear. But actually, it does come out with water. And it's really clear. go. So I have a an iron over here. Now how are we going to do that? We can't really see you doing this, can we? Right. Can we <clears> see <throat> that? Well, we can show you, don't we? We can show you the, the effect afterwards. Can you see that? 
What's interesting about this is if you spray the water on, look how strong it goes. <laughs> yes, yes, that it's was amazing. visible. Morning, Zoe. Oh, good, Sherilyn. We're back operational. I'll take that off. Right, I've just put some um, some toweling underneath this, and you could use um, a bit of, of other fabric or whatever. But you can see, if I were to soak this in water, which is what I would do. I mean, I wouldn't do this on an ironing board like this. But um, if I was to soak it thoroughly and then iron it when it's completely gone. Be very careful about ironing on ones that go um, invisible <coughs> and water erasable. We know that there have been issues with little brown marks. So as with everything, you know, you've got to really te test the fabric you're using. And one of the reasons for that is that they have there's finishes on fabrics and, you know, I think it would be really useful if some of our more experienced customers, I, guess, I mean, it would be easy if you just dunked this in water, which is what you would do. So this is only going to be really possible where you've got a, a quilt that you can, I'm just going to leave some of it still visible so that I can show you what it looks like if I haven't got rid of it all in case it goes brown. Okay. Morning, Lynn in Wales. And, oh, hello, Lynn. And Maggie in Gloucester. Both of you will have snow, I'm quite sure. Yeah. Yes. There we go. So just get rid of that. So I mean this isn't this isn't how you dry your quilt. So that's completely gone. So the point of my doing that test is really for this particular fabric is to check how it would disappear if I were to use that pink one, this uh, Aja Chaco Ace. Um, if you were to use that on a quilt that you subsequently then dunked completely in water, allowed to dry, and probably at that point, um, you would block it. And for those who aren't familiar with blocking, that basically means that you square it up using um, a board or foam, and you've got your wet quilt and you measure it and make sure the whole thing is square, <clears throat> put in pins to hold it, so that it's squared up. And if you see award-winning quilts at shows that look beautifully square, it's because they'll have been blocked. So something like this is for when you can get it wet. And I, I can tell you, I, I mean, I think you can see mostly on screen, but there is absolutely no trace of that on that fabric any longer at all. Yeah. And this is the, this is the blue equivalent. Okay, that pink one will disappear over time as well but this one will be a wash away now i think most of the more experienced customers who are long arm quilters would agree that the blue wash away is probably one of the more common markers that the experienced quilters will use and the reason being it's very consistent <clears throat> there are multiple different types of manufacturers of these wash erasable ones they're not particularly expensive they can dry out if you don't use them um, but that kind of thing is really good and an example of a clover brand we don't we don't stop this but you can get these this one is is quite nice to use and it comes with the other end you can just run along the line of it and it will disappear to literally draw along the line of stitching. So say you used this one and you weren't particularly keen after you'd quilted it on removing the whole thing, or maybe you'd only got a small piece. There was no point in dunking the whole thing in water and you'd just got a small area that you wanted to get rid of the blue lines that were still visible even though you'd stitched it. In which case, this would be a good option. So this is um, an eraser pen with a blue water erasable pencil or pen rather and there are other there are other makes of these uh, that people can bring in from the states i don't know anybody who stocks at the moment and i've forgotten the brand name of it but there is a there's a, a very fine line pen that you can fill uh, that does the same thing so that's good morning sheena and there seems to be a lot of snow around the country but poor gwen in west sussex has only got rain still <laughs> Oh no, rain is sometimes just not as nice as snow, is it? So, 
The um, other ones that I have, I've used these with um, Laurie Tigner when she came over, um, the lovely Laurie, she was using these Crayola ones. Now I know other people who've used these. Uh, is it focused on me or the... It's on you at the moment. On me at the moment, okay. <clears throat> so these Super Tips, Crayola, I know some of our customers have used these. Again, this is something that you would need to dunk in water, but it's a very easy to draw. Now, if I had wadding under here, there we go. imagine I've got a soft surface. And here, those other blue ones are a little bit more tricky, but this one just runs really easily. However, you definitely will need to wash that afterwards. I've washed it just in water without detergent and it all came out. But you're taking probably more, more of a risk. It, I mean, it comes in, it's like a packet of all different colours, the Crayola Super Tips. And they, but they run really well. If you wanted to mark that up on your quilt, when it's on the frame, then you could do so. But definitely test those out in advance. Okay. Now let's look at dark fabrics. Dark fabrics are, on the whole, a lot easier. And the reason being, of course, is that, you know, the contrast. So um, I've got one here that I've used multiple times, so it's got some marks on it at the moment, but I'm going to just show you on this one here. Morning, so. Jean. Lots of snow in Shropshire with Jean, but oh, yeah. no snow in Fife, but very frosty with Sally. Ah, oh, hi, Sally. Now, let's just talk about black fabrics, dark fabrics, and what we can use for these. So we've got a variety here. We've got the fine one. This is um, a bohen one. You can get them in, in different propelling versions and it has um, an eraser in the top. Um, it's a very fine and very, very smooth to write on. Even, let me just do this one up here. Um, so even when I've got it layered, this is soft. Even when I've got it layered, I'm not having a problem. And this is probably my favorite marker. So you see how it just glides. And the eraser at the top, you can use that and that just comes out. Or you can spray it. You can use a block eraser. And if I just take this to the ironing board. Morning, Rosemary. I'm just gonna do part of this. <clears throat> so you're just spritzing this over Yeah, I'm here. just spritzing this one because, you know, when you've sewn over it, pretty much that will go. So that's a very fine marker. I haven't that, really tried that hard with that one. That but particular Bowen marker has got a very fine tip. It's yeah. less than one millimetre. So in actual fact, I've got some, I think I should have, I've got some test ones underneath. <laughs> it's brought out a grid. So that, that, all of that has disappeared. And I just spritzed that area there. This is what it was originally. This is clear enough for me to see when I'm stitching. Um, certainly by, by hand and by machine too. That should be enough. Next one I'll show you is one that literally just disappears with iron. Let me put this the other way around so it doesn't come through. There we go. Right, so I'm going to do this one in the middle. And this is the Panda pencil. And some of you will be familiar with this one because we recently uh, got some of these in. It's really smooth. Really, really smooth. And should we take that to the ironing board, Pete? So this has got a slightly more of a waxy feel when you, you're using it compared to the sort of chalkiness of the bone. Yeah. So I don't need water for this. It just irons away, which is perfect for this kind of application. Now this one, I would say if you've got a medium to medium light fabric, you can get a residue from that, even though it's just gesso, um, which is uh, made from, it's like chalk, isn't it? Um, th there must be something in it that holds the chalk together, which sometimes I've found is a residue. But when I did the testing, and I tested it on 15, 15 different colors before we brought it in, I wanted to make sure it was fine. And I found that actually if I washed it afterwards with a little bit of, of detergent, not one with the brighteners or anything else like that, is a Sturgeon. Uh, I used that and it got rid of those um, slight amount of 
it's almost like it's slightly darker on a very on a light to medium fabric on black there's nothing so <coughs> it's absolutely great for that question from jenny who's waiting patiently not for her new moxie to <laughs> arrive so a question about when they're arriving <sighs> Now, we yeah. heard from Handy Quilter, we're hoping that they're going to ship in the next few days from Handy Quilter, Jenny. Yes. So for you and other people who've got moxes on back order, we're expecting to have them here, hopefully, fingers crossed, within about a week. Yeah. And after that, we'll be in touch with you to make arrangements for delivery. Yeah, absolutely. We're all champing at the bit. You, probably more than even us, I mean, we've champing at the bit for like the last month or two. Um, but it's been great, hasn't it? Because some of our customers have recently had them from the first batch that we got in um, and we sold out the second batch. Um, and we've got some really good customers who are doing incredible things. Yes, Diane, um, I thought your ears would perk up at that as well because you're also <laughs> Diane, waiting patiently Diane for your moxie. Like, when's my moxie? We, with luck, Diane, we'll be in touch within the next seven days to arrange delivery yep. for you. Okay, perfect. Right. Next one, um, this, before we got the fine chalk propelling pencil in, this was probably one of my favorites because it's just so easy to use and you get a little sharpener in the box. Comes with chalk in a big propelling pencil, eraser on the top. And again, this is good for when you've already got your quilt ready to go and you just want to mark up with it. Very clear line, beautiful, effortless. So this is also a Bowen product. Great but for little tick marks where you want to perhaps get your rulers to match up to. And you can see that's going to disappear like that. So this one is a, is a really nice, easy to use one. It comes, as I say, it comes in a packet with the eraser and tons of spare chalk. So that will last you a long time and you just keep um, propelling it mm. like a normal pin. Yes, Denise, you're one of the lucky people who've got your moxie already here in the UK. <laughs> she says, oh. you're going to love it. Well worth the wait. Yay. Denise is doing really, really well. Well done, Denise. It's great. Absolutely perfect. So, yeah, we, we're looking forward to seeing you, Denise, as soon as we can open up for classes and our workshops. We can socially distance in here and uh, let's hope we can do that sooner rather than later. So we can get you trying out other things and uh, we'll have the moxies set up here for you to play with. So that's really good. Uh, so I've done that one, that one, that one. Okay, this is an unusual one that some people may not have seen before. It doesn't, um, it's a clover one, white marking pen fine. And it doesn't show up very much initially, but as it dries, it does. So you could pre-mark with this. Yeah, so that looks very faint. Yeah, but we'll just look. But visible. Yeah, and that just, now that's really visible. It's very, very quick to come, um, to be able to be seen. And you'll find with this one, it's also can be ironed away. As I say, with all of these markers, you really do have to try them out. I know that people have, uh, in the States, have used not <clears throat> the ones I've shown you so far, but perhaps other ones. And some of these lines, if judges can see them, they will mark it down. So, you know, you, you will, you'll have a problem potentially. So, there we go. Question from Sue Dutton, Liz, who, yep. who says that her bowing came with different colour chalks. Oh, yes. When do you okay. use the different colours? Well, I'm not a big fan of those because, um, and I'll tell you why, because they have got pigment in them and you've not got control of what happens to that pigment should you wash your quilt later you know what what are you what's going to be happening to it is it going to be in bright sunlight is it going to get damp i don't know so my preference is and the reason why one of the reasons why i'm doing this is because many years ago we uh, stopped the in fact i must just i've got them in my bag can i just nip and get them um, we've got the clover um, wheel sashi bow marking pens. Let me just grab this. I've got to go now. Oh, I'm going to do that. Move over the floppy. 
Yeah, so many years ago, we got these in. Um, probably in the, in the 90s, this was. And this was, traditionally, these were used for marking up kimonos. They have, because you've got very, very beautiful silks for kimonos, uh, what you want to do is not mark the kimono silk so that it can't come out. And in essence, it's, um, it's chalk. It's chalk that goes in the top here. And you, get, you can get refills for these. And it has a little wheel which dispenses it. So it doesn't oh, get caught up. I hadn't seen that before. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So that was one that we started stocking. And you can see it just goes away. And if I can use one of these clothes brushes things. And then if, if you do have any residue, because you're likely to have stitched over that line. Um, if you do have any residue, again, a bit of water because it's just chalk. But they started doing them. We sold loads and loads of these. If we started, they started doing them in pink, blue, and yellow. And I had a problem with a customer who'd used the pink. I think it was had a customer who had used one on the blue, a diff, the sort of finer one. Um, and we stopped, we'd stopped stocking them because I just didn't want to have that kind of issue, you know, where someone had a problem. So I would, I would be very careful with those coloured ones. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan. But, you know, you try it, try it. That's a different brand of the propelling one that you can put those 9 millimeter, 0.9 millimeter um, white chalk in. There we go. The final bit I want to show you of the marking is the pounce that I touched on last week with uh, my golden threads paper. So I did this last week. Um, and you can catch up on that if you so desire on Facebook. So this is um, basically a design put onto golden mm. threads, concertina strip that you might use for border um, or sashing. And you can also do the same thing for with golden threads. You can do blocks like this and layer them up and stitch through, or you know the big blocks, or you can do grids. So this one, you probably won't be able to see this, but this is a grid. This is a one inch grid. And so instead of getting stencils, you can customize it to the size that you want. Draw so it out on paper. <clears throat> so let's just pick up on some comments. So it's just before you go on to yep. more of that, it's about the colored pencils, because there are a few oh, yeah. comments coming in on this. Oh, so yeah, that would be Sue Such said, yes, agreed. Yellow was awful. Yes. Um, and yes. oh, here we go. Uh, Sue says, Sue Creasy says she has one of the clover, clover rollers and used the iron out the white chalk with it, which works yeah. brilliantly. Okay. Uh, Sue says she never got the yellow out. No. And Valerie says a friend marked up silk with pink and it never came out. Yes. Um, there you go. So it's there's a general good. impression that the coloured ones can be problematic. And... Uh, Helen, also, Helen Burnham also had a problem with a pink pencil. So that's mm -hmm. very much a sort of yep. common theme here. So be warned. So, uh, you know, when you, if you are a retailer selling products like that and you have one customer that comes back and says, my quilt was ruined, honestly, you just don't want to stock them. So, and I personally, I, I don't use them. Well, with a different product list, you've got a quilt, haven't you, that you marked mm -hmm. in pink? The friction. Most people know about the friction pens. Worth mentioning, though, I think. Yeah, let, let's just mention that. Because I know that quite a few people have used the friction pens, and I still see quite a few posts. Now, friction themselves commented, after a lot of quilters got in touch with them, to say these pens were never intended to be used on fabric for quilting. So what they are is, um, and they're great for kids, you know, you sort of write on something, and then heat takes it away. Um, so it's perfect for treasure maps and all that kind of thing. Uh, but actually, people started using them on their quilts. So they would mark, and like I've been doing with the, with the iron, uh, taking it away. But they come back when it gets cold. And so I have a quilt hanging up here, and it has pink marks, even though I tried to get rid of it with sort of water and things. I didn't want to wash the quilt. I still don't want to wash the quilt because it's, it's very heavily appliqued. Um, and so I have pink markers where all of the different quilting designs that the, at the time, the handy quilter um, educator who was using the friction pens, I mean, it scared me to death when she did it because she got this bright red pen 
and we were discussing how to how to quilt it. And she said, "Oh, you could do this." And on my cream of the blocks that someone else had made this quilt, <laughs> started drawing all over this quilt. So it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Gets an iron and it disappears. So I think fine, absolutely not a problem. So you know, we quilt away. Use the iron next winter. It's hanging up at the um, the showroom at the Cotton Patch, and all these red marks come back. So just be warned about that. Don't use friction pens. You can use them for embroidery where you're covering over, but don't use them for quilting. End of. That's my piece. <clears throat> okay, so I've put down this grid that was previously stitched through with a needle that didn't have thread in it. And this is now a one inch grid just on my golden threads paper. I've got my pounce chalk. It has a reservoir in the top that you fill your chalk powder in. When you first get it, it'll be empty. And then you keep doing that until the chalk flows through. You can see it's definitely throwing through. And then you wipe it over your stencil or your golden threads paper. And this will be a lovely grid that you can then use for your quilting design. There we go, works really well. So I, I think that this combination of the, the quilt pounce, and we're getting some more golden threads in it, because we sold out when I mentioned it last week. <laughs> yes, we should have it, some so. more in this week with the Moxie delivery. Yay! Yeah. So this, when mm. you're done, just goes away, or I'm now going to take it to the ironing board. This one also irons away. There we go. When you're using this, if you've got a lot on your quilt, you will find the residue goes onto your long arm around the needle bar and the presser bar. So you might want to really clean out your bobbin case area. Give it a good, good go on the old maintenance when you're done. There we go. Oh, oh, stop it, pounds. Diane. Every time I mention Moxie, Diane's making a comment again. Come on, you, you must be dreaming about your Moxie by now, Diane. <laughs> oh, it's, so, it's wonderful. We love, we seriously love our Moxie. It's just there, isn't it? Now, um, something else I wanted to mention about marking is on a quilt that I dug out. There was a sample many years ago, and it's still a sample, because it's quite useful. I want to just discuss a couple of things about this. It's a pre-printed panel. I didn't piece it. Um, it's in a thread colour. It's been quilted in a thread colour. I probably wouldn't have used, but because it's a sample and I, it's actually easier to show in photographs, this has been done in a cream. I would have done it in like a slightly more neutral colour myself. Pete would have probably done it in... I don't know, would you have done it in Pete? Oh, I don't know. Something like Green. citron yellow. Yeah. <laughs> Be no brave. Comment. Be brave. No comment. No comment. Right, so the centre of the quilt is here, and, oh, I need my, I need my long arm ruler. I would mark this up in advance. And <clears throat> with my, now you know all about the different marking methods, I'm going to use that one. I line up my long arm ruler So you're using in the, middle. the thick bowing chalk pencil for I this. Am. Now bear in mind that when you're, when you're stitching, you're always a quarter of an inch away. But actually for marking this up in the first place, it's, it's pretty irrelevant. But do think about that. Sometimes it might affect what you do. And the way that we do this Good is point. that once you've, once you've marked your first line, for example, actually I'll do it this way. It's easier this way. Once you've marked your first line... Your next one, hopefully I'll do it like that. I will get this right in a moment. I'm just trying to think what this is easiest for you. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So your stitched line is slightly different because your actual foot is against a ruler or whatever and it will stitch in here, which is why this looks slightly different when you stitch it. Okay, so there. Then I'm going to move it over one inch. So pivoting on that space and then I'm going to mark up a line up here. Pivot, line it up with the centre and pivot and line up this, the one I've just marked with the one inch and then mark that and keep doing it. One inch 
and you will get these lovely radiating these are the ones I've stitched these radiating lines which is perfect for something like a, um, a lone star um, or variable star design so this is this is a really good way of being able to um, to get that in advance and I think something like this where it's beyond the scope of a long arm ruler that might only be 12 inches long and you don't want to be getting this wrong because it's really going to be obvious um, it's a really good idea to mark those lines in advance and then you can easily just get your straight ruler mark it move along mark it sorry stitch it move along stitch it move along so that is a really good thing to be able to do with a design like this that's that's really quite a big design so that's that i also want to mention that um, on some of the things that I'm going to do now, this idea, and just ignore this, this was a tension test, you can tell. Um, this is just a piece of, of, of uh, quilted fabric that we've taken off one of our samples, um, just put some edging on it, just to hold it together. And then this is used multiple times to act as a cloth leader to my quilt that might be a bit too small um, for putting onto the cloth leaders on a on a frame that needs basting. With something like the little foot frame as well, which is, an, is a, a frame where you've got to baste it in advance, these cloth leaders are invaluable because you don't have to have so much backing and so much wadding that you've got all the way around the rails. And then we can clamp that in place, either top or bottom, so when we get to the end, end of our quilt, we would put one of these on the bottom as well. So that's the sort of idea of a cloth leader. The other thing, um, I don't know if there's any questions on that, but I think that's pretty much it for, for marking. That, by the way, is the Golden Threads paper in its, in its packaging. Um, now, the next thing to mention is quilting with different fabrics and different materials. So, you can quilt in, with so many different materials. I mean, obviously, we've got these uh, pieces of, of cotton fabric that we piece together or whole cloth um, and we use multiple waddings we can use single piece of wadding or you can layer them up and use multiple waddings to get a much more defined effect but what if we wanted to use something a little bit more interesting so uh, <coughs> morning veronica in dublin there we go. it's rare to be snowy in dublin but it is today now this is a this is a lovely piece i love this piece yeah so this uh, is by Deborah Harwood. Um, she called it uh, Frost and uh, she did this on an Avante. Single layer of organs, organdy or organza? organza? Organza. So this is the finest white organza. Very, very thin. Single layer yeah. and she stitched it with some thick black thread here and she's embellished it with some silvering on some of the branches. Yes. And you can see it's just a loose item there, and the effect is fabulous. It's really artistic, as you can see. And uh, we have this in our showroom. Yep. It's just an example of showing what you can do if you are artistic, and also that you don't necessarily mm -hmm. need three layers on your long arm. Right. And I think, just to, to follow on from that, I mean, I know that Deborah just literally puts that on as it is. But there's um, another a customer who, um, well, another person, I should say, who, who uses this kind of fabric. And she actually uses a water-soluble stabiliser and then puts it, uh, her very fine fabric on top. So that's Joe Beatty. Um, and Joe does some beautiful pieces. So the kind of things that you can use for that are... <clears throat> Put them in here somewhere. I'll just get a Cut away. piece up on here. Yeah. I will find here it is. So the, I think I've got two percent. These are the two I want to. Yeah, so the kind of thing that you can do, you can layer up. Now Joe, I know Joe uses something that's more um, like cling film. Or quite thick. But this is, uh, this is called Super Solvy, and there's also Solvy. So this is just, this is a stabiliser, and it enables you to 
get some um, so it doesn't pull in if you if you prefer to have um, a flatter effect with your piece this is super soldy and soldy and the only difference is really the the sort of the thickness of this material is a little thicker you can layer this up multiple times it doesn't have to be a single layer you could put five of those together okay um, the other thing that you can do with Solvi is you can put that in water, mix it up until it has become a liquid, and then you can store it um, like that and use it as you wish, paint it, painting it onto fabrics um, or materials. And that would then have a layer of stabilizer when it dries that enables you to stitch through it, and then you'd wash it afterwards and it would just disappear. So it's a very flexible um, stabiliser um, and I think, I mean, in the, I'm pretty sure that you can get these uh, in the UK. Um, I've, I've got these um, from Quilt Market so, um, a few years ago, but they've been really useful and you can also draw on this. Now you have to be careful, you don't draw on some, with something that's then going to go through to your piece, but you can actually use that um, by tracing a design and then stitching through it and then washing it away. So that saves having to unpick all your stitches or picking bits of the uh, foundation away. So that's that's okay. a bit about Super Solvi and Solvi. Question from Lorraine about Deborah's piece here. Yeah. So, so the organza is attached to the leaders in a single layer and it's a matter of finding the correct tension. Yeah. Deborah doesn't really worry about tension. It's more about the effect. I mean, she does insofar as it has to form a stitch. But we're not really, we can't bury the stitches like we can with um, standard pieces. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a, we're not looking for that sort of quilting perfection. We're looking for an, an effect. I'll give you another example where that is the case, is a very good quilter, Liz Jones, over in Herefordshire, went over to see her. She has a Sweet 16 sit down. And she got a demonstration, well, she got a sample piece on the wall. It was a barley batik dark 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 navy and a gold thread and I thought she must have done it on her uh, Bernina 830 or whatever it was it was a big old Bernina and I said oh what did you do that and it looked like an embroidery that she might have stitched out like a pre-pattern or whatever and she said no I did it on the sweet 16 and it looked like chain stitch and the way that she'd done it is she'd really loosened off the top tension and she'd gone one direction and then she'd come back and it actually looked like a gold chain stitch. It was amazing. It just shows, you know, you, sometimes you have to think um, more creatively with stuff like this, that we're not doing the same thing that we are with quilting. So just throwing that out there. Because I mean, remember when we first um, started Pete and we had the, the lady who did the cathedrals yes. pieces. Again, that was on multiple layers, different textures, different fabrics. Um, and it was, uh, so it was, I'm going to not, I not remember her name. We can put a link to it. Uh, we, we had this the other day, didn't we? <laughs> um, and there's a, an album that we did because we took photographs of it. And it's amazing what she stitched through. Leather, some vinyls, all that kind of thing on her sit down. Sweet 16. The other fabric that we, we showed last time, I've lost my piece. Um, but it's, oh, here it is. This is the Radiance fabric. Now, something like this that's a bit more tricky than a standard cotton fabric. The first time I saw this, I thought, crikey, what, what do we do with this? But luckily, Annalise Little Fair had already experimented and Linda Jackson had already experimented with Radiance fabric. And what we did was we stabilized it with woven cotton fusible. Now I previously used this with a woven cotton fusible with Liberty Tarnal on. If you want to, to put, if you want to quilt through something that's a mixture, of Liberty Tarn Lawn and regular weight cotton fabrics, you might want to stabilize with woven cotton fusible. Woven cotton fusible will take something that is difficult, uh, cotton, like um, yeah, the Tarn Lawn, something like the Radiance fabric. Um, you can do it with, oh gosh, like um, all the sort of different types of, um, of, of uh, dressmaking fabrics. So you might use um, shot cotton, um, shot silk, loads of different things and it makes it look feel it sort of takes the stitches like a cotton so you iron it onto the back of your fabric and then you have a cotton like 
um, fabric that you can use? Deborah's asked where you can get radiance fabric. That's a question that always comes up yeah. for the UK. You might and have to get it in from the States. Yeah, we, we've not found a supplier. And no. well, that question came up previously, and I haven't heard where it can currently be purchased in the no. UK. No, I've, I've asked a few people, and I'm still waiting for people to come back and let me know. So we'll keep you posted on that. So that was a bit on different um, textures, but the <clears> one I wanted to show you now is uh, sewing on cork, which this is a, um, a cork fabric that's attached to um, some kind of... It's Sunday morning and I'm kind of realising all, not all my words are flowing today. So this is... Uh, what's this? Some well, it's some sort of fabric backing. Yeah. So you've got real cork on this side in a thin layer. The whole thing is probably about a millimetre thick in yeah. total. There's another variant here with some silvering patterns. You can get ones with gold. As so well. it's quite interesting stuff, but it's very stable because of that backing. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to just do a quick little demonstration of sewing through this. So to give you, should we just move over here? Yeah. Actually, so Sally says she's only been able to find radiance in the US, and I think that is the current situation, yeah. Sally. But we're trying to see if we can source it, hopefully, for somebody in the UK. It would make it a lot easier. That's right. So oh, this is, um, I've just put the cork on a, just for this demonstration. Um, I've got fabric, I've got wadding, and I've got fabric. So it's an old quilt sandwich, and I've just put it on top of that. I'm using a Wonderfill uh, polyester. What is that? You see, polyfast. It's a trilobal polyester. It's a bit like Glide. It's a 40 weight. And I've got it on my Sweet 16. Um, I pulled the thread through and just checked it as I would normally for the amount of tension I would expect to have to use. And I'm just going to get my sweet spots. And I've just got it in manual at the moment, but here we go. Right, so here we go. That's the back. Got a loose thread there. But otherwise, that is looking like beautiful tension. And that's just sewn really nicely through there. Yes, it's not, not showing up too much. I mean, a thick thread would work really well on this, you know, with a, with a bigger needle. I'm, you could be quite creative with this, I yeah, think. Yeah, let me just change I'll change it to black so that people can see. Got a black over there. So if you want to change your thread, fairly quickly. And I, I, I think this is a, this will be a 16 needle on here. Mm -hmm. So if I just show how to change this. So for anybody who's got one of the long arms, this is the quick way of changing the thread. If you're using something very similar and you don't need to change the way that you've got it threaded, in other words, the number of um, pretensioners that we've got it through is I've got it through two okay. tie so you cut it you tie a little knot and then I'm going to pull that through as I pull it through I just unthread it from the needle as I pull it through the bit I'm going to be careful with is these tension discs here I just ease them apart so that it can come all the way through and there that's now threaded I've got tension on there, but it's slightly looser than so, the previous one. Sue asks, what will be the purpose of using the cork? Well, I think it's just for a question of... Yeah, for bags you could use it. Yeah. So it's for more sort of creative things rather than quilting projects, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but the same as, you know, this is these machines, we can use them for leather. I've used them with really, really thick hessian and used 12 weight thread 
Um, I've got that sample, haven't I, of the wall somewhere. So I'm yeah. just going to thread this up. Hello, Carla. We seem to have a Portuguese discussion going on on our thread at the moment between Carla and oh, Rosemary, yeah. which is good. My Portuguese isn't, isn't too hot, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We need our neighbour, Dorothea. Right, so that is now threaded. And I've adjusted the tension just by just sort of feel. That feels pretty good. And down and up. Pull up my bobbin thread. Now you should be able to. We should be able to see this because this is now a strong con contrast. I've got a very light um, thread in my bobbin. in my bobbin, and I'm going to put it on regulated stitch. I've got a um, a stitch regulated insight table here, so I'm going to put it on cruise of 17% manual 11 stitch. Sorry, regulated stitch of 11 stitches per inch. <laughs> So that's a little test see how that looks so it's this stitch here yeah and it's coming through just a fraction but it is black against white so I might just tighten that 10-15 minutes of a clock face but yeah, otherwise very effective. that looks really good and you could use two needle two threads through one needle if you wanted a much thicker look as well you know all the techniques that we can use on regular cotton fabric are going to be the same on this as long as it doesn't split it. Now, if you want to use something like um, leather, there are there are um, people like Kathy Wiggins. Annalise Littlefair is now uh, trained on on teaching on leather with Kathy, and uh, there are special leather needles. So, you know, if you're interested in that kind of thing, I'm hoping that at some point, either you know, with Annalise or, or with Kathy, that we can run some some classes on that because that would be amazing. Um, or you can have a look at Kathy's stuff. So. That's a little bit about uh, quilting on different fabrics, which I hope was interesting. Maybe open your eyes to the possibilities. Any questions? Yeah, there are certainly some people who are seeing the creative possibilities of different fabrics Great. and things. Uh, yeah. Sherilyn, book cover. Sorry? Book cover. Book cover, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sherilyn, thanks for your tip about doing the, in, uh, the translation as I go. It can be quite difficult, though, sort of carrying the camera and uh, <laughs> <laughs> doing everything at the same time. But yeah, that's that's useful. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about Diane and her moxie again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Diane. <laughs> yes. Yes, long arming out on leather. We haven't got a sample here, unfortunately, but no. some of the leather work is absolutely yeah. fabulous. It's it fantastic. Is. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been incredible to see um, you know, that development of that side of things. And when we went over to Houston, we saw Kathy Wiggins, didn't we, Pete? We did. Um, we, it was lovely. We actually um, had a dinner out with her and met her and saw some of her leather saddles and some of the work that she's done. And really sort of taking leather, leather um, work uh, with these long arms to, an, to literally another level. So the final thing I wanted, unless there's any other questions, I'm just going to mention about these because I'm looking for your input, right? This is where I need the creative inspiration of our customers. So, we normally are doing loads and loads of shows and we end up with lots and lots of these, which are quilt sandwiches, which are either big that have been on frames or small pieces that have been on the Sweet Sixteens. And I have, oh, I have here, if we can just pull back, it's, it's not exactly like in the movies when we've got it on a, on a track. That's just Pete manually moving the camera back. This is, um, it's not all of our <clears throat> books, but it's a good selection of them. We have got here loads of these. Now, my intention was to, um, to make them into quilts. I don't really want to uh, just give them to the cat or dog's home, really, because I think that we can do something more interesting with them. 
So I'm looking for your ideas. I might have a piece like this. They're all random sort of sizes. And some of them have got some pretty cool quilting on. Actually, Pete did this piece. We should really keep that. Um, this was from one of the samples from uh, the, one, some of the Facebook lives we, we did. So something like this. What are we going to do? Could we make quilts for care leavers and join them together? I know that um, Sharon and Pauline, who, who are local, have been doing quilts for care leavers and they, we put them on Facebook that they've done one of these. But it's a question of, you know, how we could do that. You know, has anybody got any ideas of what we can do as, in terms of joining them together? Perhaps, because um, most of them are sandwiches. So we need to have some joining strips. Would we use um, some kind of fusing method? Would we use an overlocker? What do you think? So we don't, you don't have to answer that straight away. I'll leave you to think about that. Um, and I'd you know, be really useful, It'd be really good to get your input as to how we can best use these. My intention with some of them is to, when we can open up again, we've got the local Quilts for Care Leavers group and we will have some sewing sessions here. But should we, should we stick some um, Sizzix stars and hearts and things on it and, and make them look a bit different? Should we give them to children? Should we give them to homeless? You know, uh, what, would, what do you think? So they're here. And we need to work it out because otherwise we will have a warehouse full of these if we're not careful. A couple of questions yes. in, um, not relating to that, but Sandra Weir. Morning, Sandra. Oh, good morning. Says, Thank you for your message. Hi to Derek. <laughs> says, what size needle is used for leather? Ah, for, for leather. I think um, Annalise, what size is we're, we're not sure, actually. We, no. We've got, uh, we've, we've got different sizes, but we haven't actually done any of the work on leather ourselves yet, have we? So no. what I would say is there are specific leather needles. And whilst you could use standard needles, right. there are specific leather needles that yeah. are sort of diamond in profile. If you did a sort of close up of the tip of the needle, it's a very sharp a sort of three sided point to pierce through the leather. Yes. So that is certainly recommended. Yeah, the um, idea is that if you, if you use, you can use normal sharps. Some people have done that successfully. But the benefit of it is that when it pierces through the leather, you don't want it to split. So the idea, and this is true of all of the leather needles that you get if you're doing hand sewing as well, they have this sort of three-sided and it goes through and the leather doesn't split. Yeah, it cuts through the leather. Through. <clears throat> um, question from Sheena. Any updates on a possible handy quilter? Academy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I mean, if you, if you know more than us about when the pandemic is going to be over, <laughs> we can all travel. Then, yes. We we have allowed ourselves, Sheena, recently just to start um, tentatively thinking yeah, that that there is going to be a possibility of us holding another academy. But as you will know, that it takes a huge yeah. amount of organisation with the teachers that we have to bring in. So we have to be, I think, quite a bit further down the line with the pandemic before we can be sure that mm -hmm. something can happen when we plan it to happen. Yeah. I think we'll know more in the summer, won't we? I well, would I, hope so. I would say, say by July or August, if it looks like we're able to travel and stay in, in hotels normally and eat together, then um, we could look at doing it. But until that happens, we, we can't really. No. Okay. Other uh, question from Jen. Yep. So she's suggesting Quilt As You Go would be perfect for joining these together. You could yep. make a real feature of the framing of the pieces and a big yes to applique. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, so somebody has sort of uh, seconded that. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's, um, I've, I've not done a huge amount of quilts as you go uh, for, for many years because we've had long arms, it's not been necessary. Um, but I know that Martin Michelle's got a really good book with different techniques. I just, you know, I haven't uh, investigated that. So Susan, Susan's on. Morning, Susan. Oh, Susan okay. Kathleen. Yeah. Um, she's used leather needles and uh, used it with glide and used the equivalent size for the thread, which is what you would do with a quilt. So I think we've got 16s, haven't we? Yeah. I was going to show this. Should I just show this? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, if we go over here, Pete, actually, can you go back on to this bit? Right, so this, this is, a, I'm just going to give you a quick, <clears throat> quick story. Uh, to finish uh, this week and this is it's a little bit rough now but what you're looking at is a piece of wadding a piece of wadding that was has come from wool that Yale College in Wrexham um, gave us as a sample 
And what the student, they've got a, had an Avanti since 2011, I think. There's a really great teacher, I don't know whether he's still there, Marcus Thomas, a very innovative, in fact, he got voted, I think he was made Teacher of the Year in Wales a few years later after this, because he basically, it's a textile focused college in Wrexham. Uh, he's a great guy. He has a really interesting, innovative department. So they embraced long arming like a long time ago now. And what they did was they wanted to recreate the old wool Welsh blankets and quilt them. Uh, so he said to a, a local farmer, I, mean, I need some wool wadding. So they went into the field. <laughs> Marcus told this story. It's very, very funny. Uh, he said, we went to the field and the, sheep, <laughs> the farmer said, which sheep would you like? Um, so they literally got the fleeces off the sheep that Marcus had identified as looking good. <laughs> and they said, he, took, he said it was a lot of work because you, know, you have to get rid, um, you have to get down to being able to card this. There's a lot of processes where you end up with a lanolin, isn't it, that mm -hmm. you get from sheep. Yes. And he said it's very messy. I mean, he had no idea until he started doing it. So this wool has been created from those fleeces. They then created a wool, um, a wool bat by putting quite a, a loose leaf, uh, loose weave of muslin cloth, cheesecloth, um, over both sides. And then they quilted it on their Avante to hold that wadding together. They then... They wove their own wool blankets using the threads, the, the wool that thread they'd made. They wove that and then they put that inside and they made these amazing wool, traditional wool blankets. I thought that was such an interesting story. And the point is, is they quilted that on an Avante. They did have to raise the foot and it was before the glide foot. They would have benefited a lot from the glide foot, to be honest. So the glide foot too would have been perfect for this. But it's, it's, it's a really beautiful, very organic feeling, um, natural dyes. And I thought that was a really cool bit of those people in Wales, those students who were incredibly talented. And Alan, Alan cut that out from the sample. One of the guys, when they, he, Alan went with them to um, the Steadford in Wales with the Avanti um, and worked with Yale College there um, with Marcus. And the students, the students who were there, one of them, he got just a picture in a magazine that was just out open. And he literally took the Avante handles and stitched. In fact, you can see it better on the back, actually. He stitched the picture of the guy that was in the magazine, just using the Avante, just completely freehand. And that was one of the students that um, was one of the people that did this wool and worked on that wool quilt. So I thought that was an interesting little thing that, you know, we never know where those you know, long arm machines are going to go. But I think the best thing is if they can go into places like Wrexham College and inspire some students to use them. Um, it would be great if we could get some more in, in some of the schools and colleges around the UK. Lovely. Well, listen, it's been a real pleasure for, for us. I hope you've really enjoyed it as well. Uh, we've covered quite a few different things today. I think, you know, the point of these sessions is I'm not really doing a training session as such. I'm just giving you little hints and tips as to how I've, we've seen, we get access to all of this stuff. We see how our customers have been using the machines and we absolutely love it when people do things a little differently. Um, but hopefully the, the marking has been useful for you as well. So we'll say goodbye. We're going to be back next week um, on Saturday, 11 a.m. Um, we look forward to seeing you then, uh, the final weekend of the month, and uh, we'll have some more exciting things and techniques and tips and stuff to share with you next week. So take care. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.